Suppose you peruse the Bible, the Quran, or any other religious writings originating from the Abrahamic faiths. In that case, you may quickly discover that numerous characters bear names that are ambiguous or that have ambiguous characteristics. For instance, Enoch is not the only famous person mentioned in the scriptures that we have examined a few times. Cain had a son named Enoch before him, and the city was named for him. These behaviors are therefore not particularly exceptional. That doesn't, however, make the scenario any less confusing, and this is evident when we examine the being referred to as Azazel. He appears in a few canonical passages, but he also appears frequently in the scriptures that are not canonical. Who then is he? A chief among the fallen angels. A jinn, perhaps. The very embodiment of evil itself. We've chosen to examine Azazel as he appears in many religious texts today, as well as the history of these representations. As we reveal the startling reality about the ghost known as Azazel, please take a seat back and get ready. As we previously mentioned, there is a certain amount of complexity to the enigma surrounding Azazel's identity. Maybe the answer to this puzzle lies in one of the previous accounts of the kinds of things that this spirit got up to in the Bible. Three times in Leviticus 16 is the occurrence described whereby the name Azazel is mentioned. Here, Aaron, Moses' brother and a self-reliant leader, is readying two male goats for sacrifice. Since then, this event has been known as the Day of Atonement. This is due to God's command to Moses to mark out two goats for Aaron. The first was to be sacrificed, and the other was to bear the Israelites' sins until Aaron touched it, prayed over it, and then released it into the wilderness. The newer scriptures claim that the other goat was to receive the spirit of Azazel, making it a scapegoat even if the older texts don't always refer to him by that name. It also implies that Azazel is a being connected to evil in the Bible. The well-known Book of Enoch contains another depiction of Azazel. For those who are unaware, the Book of Enoch contains stories that shed light on the causes of the Great Flood, which swept across the planet, and left only Noah, his family, and two of every animal on earth floating in an ark until the flood passed. It also contains secrets related to astrology and astronomy. According to what is written in the scriptures, mankind flourished for a while after Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden. God ordered a group of about 200 angels, known as the Watchers or the Sons of God, to watch over humanity and record their development without ever meddling in their lives because he wanted life to remain good. Unfortunately, the Watchers gave in to temptation because the human women's beauty was too irresistible. The Watchers descended from the sky to take the humans as wives, but their commander Samjaza, who fell prey to this yearning for women's bodies, dissuaded them. This inevitably resulted in corruption, since the Watchers taught people things like magic, sorcery, root-cutting, and alchemy, things that God had no intention of giving to humanity. In addition to copulating with the women to create the enormous hybrid monsters known as the Nephilim. Nevertheless, none of the Watchers appeared to be as harmful as the Watcher known as Azazel, despite the various horrors that were occurring during this early period of human history. Unlike his brothers, he was the one who had no interest in women. Rather, he appeared to take pleasure in the continued degradation of humanity. The Watcher's procreation with the women, which produced the enormous hybrid creatures known as the Nephilim, and their teaching of people things like magic, sorcery, root-cutting, and alchemy, things that God had no intention of imparting to humanity, inevitably resulted in corruption. The Watcher known as Azazel, however, appeared to be more harmful than the others, despite the other horrors occurring during this early period in human history. It was he who, unlike his brothers, had no interest in women. He seems to take pleasure in the continued degradation of humanity instead. It was he who taught humanity how to work with metals and colors, which allowed them to create weapons and fight one another. This distinguishes him as the one who sought to pull humanity farther and farther from God suggesting that he may have had a prominent position in the Watchers' hierarchy. Some people think that he, not Samjaza, was the leader of the Watchers. Whatever the situation, once the Archangel's focus shifted to the mayhem occurring on Earth, it was Azazel that they noticed the most. As a result, when they reported the turmoil to God, they brought him up first. God then expressly told Archangel Raphael 
to cast and bind him before hurling him into the deepest recesses of the Dudel Desert till the end of eternity. After sending other angels to handle other problems pertaining to the Watcher's operations on Earth, in addition, the Prophet Enoch informed him of his destiny and the fact that he would never be at peace because of his hatred for people. But there may be more to his tale because according to three Enoch, the Rabbi Ishmael descended into the heavens and met Metatron, an angel who identified himself as Enoch. Metatron told Ishmael that during the days of the Great Flood, following his ascent into heaven, he encountered Azazel together with two other angels. We could have thought that the fallen Watcher was still imprisoned for all eternity beneath jagged stones in the deepest caverns, therefore there must be some type of inconsistency here. In addition, even if he was set free, there was no regret for what he had done because Azazel hated that God had made Enoch an angel and made Azazel submit to him. Azazel is described as an evil bird that seeks to obstruct a sacrifice to God in another scripture called the Apocalypse of Abraham. Here, an angel instructed Abraham to offer a sacrifice to God. But a bird misleads Abraham, telling him that the angel is about to destroy the land and slay him after. Abraham discovers, though, that this is all a cunning ruse when the angel discloses the scheme to be the scheme of the malicious bird, whom he recognizes as Azazel. Cursing him out, the angel discloses that since Abraham is the son of God and will never suffer harm, Azazel can never corrupt him. The angel also discloses that Abraham is a citizen of heaven and that Azazel is a citizen of earth. Abraham is unable to follow Azazel since Abraham now occupies Azazel's place in heaven. This indicates that he is helpless against someone like Abraham. After that, Abraham is carried up into heaven upon seeing Adam and Eve corrupted. He observes something or someone in this scene that has the appearance of a snake with six hands and six wings. God answered questions and explained that the being behind the tree was Azazel, the embodiment of evil and someone who wishes for human destruction. It's interesting to note that God tells Abraham about the Messiah, also known as the Relief, who will appear in the end times to rescue humanity. The pagan Relief will appear, and both humans and Azazel himself will adore it. Strangely enough, Abraham witnesses the man being mistreated in the vision before Azazel kisses him on the face. God makes it known that he is the Messiah, alluding to Christ Jesus. It's interesting to note that Judas and Azazel are likened to each other, suggesting that Azazel could be Judas. God then says that many people would support Azazel, the evil force, during the days of judgment until they perish under him. This portrays Azazel as God's adversary, and while he will ultimately be defeated, his malevolent might will destroy countless others. It becomes evident that Azazel is best understood as a malevolent spirit who has always desired to destroy humanity. Azazel is regarded as an angel or jinn in the Muslim faith as well. It is believed that Azazel repeatedly refused to submit to man after God created him, demonstrating his contempt for humanity. In conclusion, whether he appeared as a fallen angel, renegade, or demonic spirit, no matter what shape Azazel takes, it is best to be cautious around this creature because there is nothing positive to come from it. That concludes today's video. Make sure you subscribe and like our videos. To While studying Christian teachings in my theological education, I soon developed an interest in the ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious books, the Christian ideas, and the idea of heaven according to the Book of Enoch piqued my curiosity in particular. I studied many historical books and the Old and New Testament scriptures for hours throughout my research, and I also went to synagogues and churches to hear from the religious leaders. My kids questioned me about the Book of Enoch and the Ten Heavens it mentions early this week. The majority wanted to know more about the Ten Heavens and were only aware of the three. My research allowed me to provide them with a thorough response to their inquiries. So how many heavens does the Book of Enoch contain? The Book of Enoch states that there are ten heavens. The second Book of Enoch describes these heavens and mentions Enoch's mystical ascent through the ten heavens. According to the ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious classic, the Book of Enoch, these heavens are the levels of heaven that God's messenger, Enoch, travels through to reach the fallen angels. Notably, Genesis 5.24 states that Enoch walked with the Lord to heaven. 
making him Noah's great-great-grandfather. The Book of Enoch also describes angels, giants, and demons in the many heavens. I'll go into more detail regarding the heavens as they are described in the Book of Enoch in this video, along with the purposes of each of the ten heavens. Continue reading to find out more about them. Why does the New Testament mention just three heavens, whereas the Book of Enoch lists ten? The New Testament only cites three heavens, although the Book of Enoch portrays ten. This discrepancy may be due to the belief that God did not inspire the New Testament, but that God did inspire the Book of Enoch. As a result, believers do not think that following the precepts or sayings included in the Book of Enoch is a good idea. Therefore, the Book of Enoch is one of the Pseudepigrapha books, written in the 1st or 2nd century before the time of Christ, even though it is one of the older Christian manuscripts. Furthermore, the statements in this book were never accepted as authentic by Jewish rabbis and early church leaders, and they were never added to the Hebrew scriptures or canon, which serve as the foundation for the other books of the Bible. This would imply that the inspired scripture-based conception of heaven was the only one that was universally accepted. What is the number of heavens in the Book of Enoch? Stars, clouds, morning dew, and snow make up the first heaven. According to the Book of Enoch, the first heaven is situated both above and inside the clouds in the Earth's atmosphere. The winged angles are located in this area of the skies as well. Along with 200 angels, the elders and rulers of the constellations reside here, as well fallen angels. According to the Book of Enoch, one of the biggest oceans, the Great Sea, is said to lie near the first heaven. It's also the region of heaven from whence snow and morning do originate. The prison of death, despair, and darkness is the second heaven. The second heaven is described as total darkness in the Book of Enoch. According to 2 Enoch 7 1 3, all of the fallen angels who accompanied Satan in his rebellion are thought to be imprisoned in this heaven and are dangling from chains in anticipation of the Day of Judgment. The Paradise of Mercy and Justice of Hell is the Third Heaven. It is thought that the Third Heaven is a kind of paradise that is exclusive to all good deeds and moral people. It is said that the Tree of Life can be found among the sweet orchard groves in this paradise. The Lord will rest in this garden, which is in the center of the garden when He comes. Furthermore, Beneath the tree of life in the third heaven, which has roots that go far into the Garden of Eden, are four streams that symbolize abundance, joy, and happiness. Milk, wine, honey, and oil. It is also thought that three hundred angels in this heaven perpetually sing while tending to the Garden of Eden. The northern region of the third heaven, according to legend, is a horrible location that is frigid, with frozen darkness and an unending river of fire. It is not all happiness and joy, though. The toughest angels are said to reside in this region of the third heaven, torturing condemned sinners with sharp objects. The twelve gates of the fourth heaven, including the sun and moon. It is thought that the fourth heaven is the one with the twelve great gates and the lunar routes. The twelve gates are equally distributed along the routes, rays, leading to the eastern and western portals of the sun. The sun moves daily alongside 8,000 stars in the fourth heaven, but the third heaven only contains 300 angels. In contrast, the fourth heaven has thousands of angels. This heaven is thought to have an extra hundred angles, the main function of which is to start a fire. This heaven is home to six winged creatures, whose functions include escorting angels, chalkidri, and phoenixes, Additionally, armed soldiers are often singers and musicians. It is thought that heaven's function is to make sure the universe functions properly without any disturbance. It is thought that the fourth heaven is the one with the twelve great gates and the lunar routes. The twelve gates are equally distributed along the routes, rays, leading to the eastern and western portals of the sun. The sun moves daily alongside eight thousand stars in the fourth heaven but the third heaven only contains 300 angels. In contrast, the fourth heaven has thousands of angels. This heaven is thought to have an extra hundred angles, the main function of which is to start a fire. 
This heaven is home to six winged creatures, whose functions include escorting angels, chalkidri, and phoenixes. Additionally, armed soldiers are often singers and musicians. It is thought that heaven's function is to make sure the universe functions properly without any disturbance throughout the stars and monitor their movements. The management of the many governments on earth fell under the purview of the angels as well. The angels in the sixth heaven monitored everyone on earth's good and bad deeds to accomplish this. These views also kept an eye on the earth's natural systems, which had an impact on both life and death. The six phoenixes, the six seraphim, and the six cherubim are among the other beings that once inhabited this earth. The six seraphim are sung in unfathomable alien melodies together with one voice. Seventh Heaven Light and Fire-Related Dominions and Powers The Seventh Heaven, often known as the Angelic Kingdom of Fire and Light, is supposed to be a heavenly domain teeming with numerous armies who are all loyal to the highest God. Virtues, Archangels, Powers, Dominions, Orders and Principalities or Governments are some of these troops. This heaven is home to thrones, seraphim, cherubim, and other celestial beings. This shivan also contains eonid stations of light and nine regimental calls. The eighth heaven, summer slash winter, snow and drought, the heavenly domain that regulates the seasons all year round and brings forth rain or drought is thought to be the eighth heaven. It is also thought to contain the twelve celestial constellations the twelve star-bound mansions of the ninth heaven. The celestial constellations behind and above the twelve major star groups visible at night are said to reside in the ninth heaven, according to the second book of Enoch. Seraphim, cherubim, and the throne of lightning and thunder comprise the tenth heaven. The book of Enoch describes the tenth heaven as the highest of the heavens and the true home of God. This is the location of God's throne which he will use to judge the souls of people. It's also said that God makes decisions and gives directives in the tenth heaven, where he confers with angels and saints. Finally, the tenth heaven, the highest heaven, is supposed to have innumerable angels encircling God and chanting hymns of glory and praise.